All right, thanks for watching. And previously on Payam Battlestar Galactica, we discussed the concept of a soup, which is a generalization of the concept of a maximum. And let me remind you of the definition. So again, let S be a non-empty subset of R that is bounded above by M, bounded above by a number M. Then we say that M is the least upper bound of S, or M is the supremum of S, if and only if the following condition holds. Whenever I give you a number that's smaller than M, so for all, M1 strictly smaller than M, there is some element S1 in S, then there is S1 in S that's actually bigger than that number, such that S1 is strictly greater than M1. And again, think of this in terms of the analogy. Suppose I tell you, you are not the best student in the class, so M1 is strictly smaller than M. What this means is there's some other student S1 in your set that's better than you. All right. Um, and again, what's nice about this, as I said, it generalizes the concept of a maximum. For instance, the following set does not have a maximum, but it has a supremum. For instance, consider the set 0, 4. It does not have a maximum because the maximum would be 4, which is not in your set. However, it does have a supremum, which is 4. So that's why the supremum is a generalization of the maximum. Okay. Now the question is, why should we care about this? Actually a lot, and in this video and the next one, we'll do a lot of fun consequences of supremum. Well, but the main reason we care about this is why what I just said. Even though the maximum doesn't always exist, it turns out the supremum always exists. And this is what the book calls the completeness axiom and what I like to call the least upper bound property. So very important, the LUB property, because I love you. Um, so. Again, beginning just gibberish, the usual gibberish. So suppose S is a non-empty subset subset of R that is bounded above. Okay, which most of the cases most of the sets we deal with have that property, then S has a least upper bound. Upper bound, which just means the supremum exists. That is, supremum of S exists. Again, what does that mean? If I give you a random set that's not empty and we know that it is bounded above by some number m, then automatically the supremum exists. And I know those are a lot of words, but literally the only thing you have to remember from this is the supremum always exists. Because look, what is this saying? Either your set is not bounded above, which means it's infinite on one side, which means the supremum is infinity, or the set is bounded above and the supremum exists as a number. So for our purposes, all you need to know is the supremum always exists, even though the maximum doesn't always exist. And 
again, this is super, super important because we'll deal with Suprema a lot and they will always solve our problems. But this is saying, yes, it, the stuff that solves our problems actually exists. So it's not just wishful thinking. And not only that, it also tells us something interesting about the structure of the real numbers, namely, they are complete. So note, so the real numbers have that property. We can actually show this, maybe we'll do this at some point, uh, but um, the real numbers have that property. So in other words, R is complete. And geometrically, what is this saying? It says that R actually doesn't have any holes or any gaps. And let me explain this in more detail. That is, R has no holes or gaps. For instance, and again, this is actually what makes R so much more different from uh, the rational numbers. Because it turns out this property is false for the rational number. And let me give you an example. So note, LUB is false for Q. By the way, this is what makes R so special. So R does have the least upper bound property, but Q does not have the least upper bound property. And let me give you a non-example. So an example, an example of a set in the rational numbers, but that does not have a least upper bound. So let S be the set of all rational numbers whose square is less than two. So essentially what this is, it is the interval minus square root of two comma square root of two, but in the rational numbers. And now for a second, pretend that our universe is just a rational numbers. And in particular, we do not know what a real number is. So square root of two in our universe is just complete gibberish. Then, one can show that S is bounded above by three. By three, and I've done them in the notes, you just do it by the contrapositive, but it turns out S does not have a least upper bound. But soup of S does not exist. And why is that? Because look, what is S? Is again, all the uh, rational numbers basically between square root and two and two. So in particular, well, the supremum of S should be square root of two. But remember, we don't know what square root of two is. So at least in our rational world, we say, well, there is no supremum because again, we don't know what square root of two is. And again, because Because, again, the supremum of s is square root of 2, but square root of 2 is not a rational number. So again, think maybe in ancient Greek times before they found what square root of 2 is, they would just say, well, it doesn't exist. There's no rational number that is a supremum. And Again, I told you this has something to do with the geometry of the rational numbers because what is going on here, again, S is this broken set with a lot of holes and precisely square root of two is in one of the holes. You see, if you map S and then also all the rational numbers, then square root of two, which is the supremum, is actually not in the rational numbers. Um, in other words, it's in one of the gaps of the rational numbers. But this is, again, not true for the real numbers because the real numbers, they're complete. They don't have any holes. 
So if you redo the situation but in the real numbers, then again, R is a complete entity. And in fact, the gap square root of two that was missing in Q is actually in the real numbers. So here S is a, a set that's bounded above in R and that has, does have a least upper bound in R. Last but not least, I would like to mention it is always possible to fix a broken heart. In other words, it's always possible to complete an incomplete space. So that is good. And for the rest of today, we'll just do uh, applications of the least upper bound property. All right, thank you.